Hi, welcome back to Live to Fish. Good to see you back. I know it's not Friday. It's only Wednesday. But I wanted to do a midweek video only because I got some new gear in and I wanted to share it with you. Here it is. Introduced in 2019 and then released in 2020, this was a combo that when I originally ordered it um, upon its availability, was ordered in a right-handed combo, but I received the left-handed combo. And it's not something that I couldn't work around, but it was uncomfortable. I'm not ambidextrous when it comes to using bait casters, so I prefer the right-handed retrieve. So what combo am I talking about? Well, it just happens to be the Lose Mock Smash. Now the Lose Mock Smash comes in a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio with an 8 bearing system. The rod here is 6 foot 10 inches in length and it is a medium heavy action rod. I'm going to take the reel off of the combo here just to make it a little bit easier so I'm not slinging this rod around and knocking holes in the ceiling. Give you a little bit of closer view of it. Now it's a pretty fiery red, burnt orange color. Definitely get some looks. Definitely got a lot of comments on it because I did try the left-handed retrieve when I first got it. The only thing that I prefer in my reels when it comes to bait casters is I like to have an auditory or a physical click to both the drag wheel and also the tension knob. Now you won't find that in this model. But not to say it doesn't work just fine, it's just something I prefer. I like to have that auditory response, I like to have that physical click, so it kind of gives me a gauge of how far to go and to forward and how far to come back um, when I'm setting up my tension. Um, you also have your braking system. And again, that's auditory as it always is. And now to open that, there's simply a pin here that you pull, twist towards you, and then you pull it out. So again, if you get any backlashes that you gotta fix uh, on the spool, or if you just want to do the preventive maintenance and uh, oil up your equipment, which is always a good idea, that's how you take care of that. And that is a text from my wife. Be right back. Now, one thing you will notice is on the rod itself, you have the wind grip system, which these are very durable. Not only are they durable, but they really hold their grip when they get wet. Um, it's something that you won't lose control of the rod when you're casting. Even if it, uh, it's raining out, it keeps you, uh, keeps you from slipping. Now, the cool thing about this is they've transferred that system to not only the crank handles, but also the release on the bale. So uh, pretty nice feature, because I think they're, uh, they're pretty quality stuff. I like them, so boom, magic. It's right back on there. Um, this retails for $129.99. However, you can find a lot of sales. Sometimes there's coupons on sites. You can get it worth from 10% to 20% off. Um, I was lucky enough to get this 20% off with free shipping. So not a bad deal, not a bad combo. However, I'm not recommending Gander Outdoors. I ended up picking this one up from Bass Pro Shops. Now, I wouldn't recommend purchasing it from Gander Outdoors because that was my mistake the first time, and I learned from that. I've had issues with their orders in the past, so I'm going to be skipping on them uh, from here on out. But there was a good deal on it, and it was through Bass Pro Shops of all places, which I was kind of shocked at. So wherever you pick it up from, just be mindful that there are always some type of incentives or some type of sales running out there that can uh, get you just a little bit cheaper than $129.99. I did, so good luck to you. I did get some really great feedback from viewers from the last video, and I had a really interesting question from somebody that asked, what is this Texas rig that you're talking about, and what is the difference between the trapper tackle hook that you're using and maybe the extra wide gap or some of the other types of hooks that you'd use for creature baits? Well, let me show you. When setting up a Texas rig with a bait, what you're going to want to do is come in with the head on this creature bait. Here, I'm using a craw, and come in straight through the end, and maybe about, I'd say about a quarter of an inch up, come back in through the body. Now, you're going to loop this up, through here, 
This is an extra wide gap hook. You're going to put it right up there in that notch. I like to bury it so that the line and the eye of the hook is hidden with inside the plastic. Um, it keeps it from sliding up a little bit more, but it also keeps that area where you tie the knot from getting hung up on rocks or getting frayed or possibly even breaking off. It just keeps it a little bit more protected. Now, as far as this end here, you're going to want to put this back through the body. Like so. Now, that's kind of a sloppy one, but you get the picture. Now, what you see here is it's basically weedless. Okay? And when the fish come up and bite it, boom, comes down. And when it comes down, that hook is exposed. And that's when you set the hook. Now, one thing you can do is text pose it. And what that is is where you come back in, you pinch into the bait just a little bit. So that keeps that from exposing that hook a little too much so it won't get hooked up on the weeds or anything like that. So this is a traditional Texas rig with a creature bait. Now let me show you the difference with the trapper tackle hook. Now again, this is the discontinued trapper tackle hook. Now you notice a big difference between what tracker, or oops. you'll notice a big difference between what trapper tackle had designed and what the traditional extra wide gap hook is designed like. They're somewhat similar, but you can see how that hook is in just a little bit more because of that notch that's created. Now let me show you what happens when you take the trapper tackle hook and you set up a creature bait on it. Let me Texas rig this just like I did the last. Gonna loop it up, bring it back through. Come on, starting to break up a little bit. Now that I have it all set on the hook, you're gonna see how it looks almost identical once the bait's on there to the EWG. This here is an EWG hook. This here is the trapper tackle. Now what you're gonna notice is the same thing happens when the fish strikes it. See how that tip of that hook is exposed there? You can barely see that, but that's where they get hooked. Now here's the thing. When they bite down on that, see how this stays in place? It's locked in to that little notch. So it's not going anywhere. It's staying right where it's at. Now here's the difference with the extra wide gap. Again, if the fish hits it, see how it starts sliding down? Now see, they take a big chomp on it. And then sometimes it ends up getting twisted up and you have to reset it. That doesn't happen with these. I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all. Sometimes it does hit strike hard enough where it pulls it down. But look, I can pull that all the way down and I'll show you how it's exposed. Even if I push it all the way down, it's still locked in there. It's not going anywhere. So overall, I think these save baits for me more than anything because the fish just aren't destroying it by ripping it off of there. I don't see a lot of places carrying the trapper tackle anymore, but one of the places that I did find it, obviously, was Tackle Warehouse. Now, Tackle Warehouse will have those in the clearance section. Um, it's a really good deal. I would say grab some, try them out for yourself. Very inexpensive. What have you got to lose? Again, Trapper Tackle. Discontinued, but still one of my favorites. So, that wraps up a short midweek video. I hope everything's going good for where you're at. Here, not so much. We had a ton of snow over the past 24 hours, and uh, it's a real mess out there. So be safe, be well, and take care. Until next time, we'll see you Friday for What's in the Box. I live to fish. Take care.